Okay, welcome to the cardiac cycle. Um, as you can see, it's a cycle, so there is no real start and end. However, conventionally, we would start the cardiac cycle. So most of the graphs that you see, most of the diagrams you see, will start with atrial systole, go through to ventricular systole, and then go to diastole, which is where the heart is relaxed. So most uh, diagrams will show that. And the reason that we start with atrial systole is that the heart is controlled, its beat is controlled myogenically. That means it starts off in the muscle of the heart itself. And it starts from a region up in the right atrium called the SAN or the sinoatrial node. And that sends out a wave of excitation. Don't call it an impulse, it's not going through a, a neuron. Over the atria to make them contract. So that's what's happening electrically in the heart. The SAN is sending out that wave of excitation. Now it is controlled, the, the regularity of your heartbeat and the speed at which those waves are sent out is controlled from the brain. However, if you remove a heart from a body, it will carry on beating, providing you keep it, you know, wet and isotonic and give it some ATP, it will carry on beating just from this myogenic wave coming out from the sinoatrial node. <coughs> it just won't beat as regularly or, you know, you can't alter the speed. So what's atrial systole? Atrial systole is the muscles of the atria contracting and f emptying the atria into the ventricles. Now prior to that, I know I said this was the start, prior to that the ventricles have been filling up directly from the veins going, so the blood's been flowing through directly through into the ventricles, so they're almost full. And then this is the last squeeze to actually fill them up properly. Um, by emptying the what remains in the, the blood that's in the atria into the ventricles. So we're talking about making a higher pressure in the atria than there is in the ventricles and squeezing that blood through. So you will notice on this diagram that the atrioventricular valves are open to let the blood through into the ventricles, but the semilunar valves at the base of the arteries are both closed and this is because the pressure in the artery is higher than it is in the ventricles and so that sort of the, the blood sort of falls back into the pockets and shuts those valves and, and they're shut for that first part of the cycle. We then get, again, just to sort of bring in the electrical activity, that wave of excitation is collected into the atrioventricular node at the top of the septum lying directly in between the atria and ventricles. So the atrioventricular node then sends out that wave of excitation right down to the base of the heart to the apex in order that the heart will contract from the bottom. That's going down the bundle of Hiss. It then spreads up the sides each side, right and left together, and begins ventricular contraction. Now as the ventricles are sort of squeezing on that blood, the pressure in there will go up, so and blood will move from high to low pressure as we know. Now, because the pressure in the atria is lower than the ventricles, the ventricles are squeezing the blood upwards and it's pushing these atrioventricular valves, the bicuspid and tricuspid, it pushes those shut. So at this moment, in this very early atrial systole, uh, sorry, ventricular systole, the, because the atria is starting to relax and the ventricles are starting to contract, all of the valves are shut. Now you often see that uh, called isovolumetric contraction because the volume isn't changing, it's just the pressure that's going up. Volume's not changing because there's nowhere for the blood to go, it's kind of stuck in the ventricle at that point because all of the valves are shot. As the ventricle continues to contract, the pressure eventually in the ventricles will go up and it will go above that in the arteries 
and that forces open the semilunar valves and now we can see the blood leaving and going into the arteries. So that's the sort of the early ventricular systole, late ventricular systole. At this point, of course, the atria are still relaxed and they will be refilling with blood. We then get the ventricles starting to relax, so their volume is increasing and therefore their pressure is decreasing. And the first pressure it falls below is that of the arteries. Arteries are carrying blood at high pressure because it's just been forced out of the heart under enormous pressure through the semilunar valves. As the ventricles relax then, the blood tends to sort of drop back down towards the semilunar valves and it actually fills up the little pockets and snaps them shut with that sort of characteristic dub sound. So lub is the uh, AV valves closing, dub is the semilunar valve, so your heartbeat goes lub dub. Lub -dub. Again, all of the valves are shut, so the ventricular pressure is still higher than it is in the atria, but now it's below that of the uh, arteries, and so all of the valves are shut. As the ventricles continue to relax, eventually the pressure falls below that of the filling atria, so the atria pressure is going up just because blood's flowing into it. It goes up above the ventricular uh, pressure, and that forces open the atrioventricular valves, the bicuspid and tricuspid, and the blood flows directly down into the ventricles. Now you know from the heart dissection that the ventricles are much, much bigger than the atria, so in this case the blood's flowing through the atria and directly into the ventricles and kind of fills them up until they're almost full. What fills them up fully then is again, we start again with the sinoatrial node, causing atrial systole and that squeezes the last of the blood through. So what we're seeing in the middle is that when the atria are contracting in systole the ventricles are in diastole, they're relaxed. We then get ventricular systole, these two diagrams, and at that point the atria are in diastole and they're relaxed and they stay relaxed and then the ventricles go into diastole. You see that big overlap there where the whole heart muscle is all relaxed before atrial systole starts again. So you do need to know the pressure changes, you do need to know the cause of the contraction in terms of the electrical system, so the SA node sending out that initial wave, passing down to the apex through the bundle of Hiss, up through the Purkinje fibres so that the blood is pushed upwards and out of the arteries.